Having no oil, even for just a moment, is a very, very bad thing. So how do we solve it? Well, what we're gonna do tonight is begin the installation of our dry sump. One of the, the traditional sort of criticisms of LS motors is that they have oiling problems, and, and they especially have oiling problems in high G cornering. They tend to pool oil in the, uh, the passenger side heads, especially forward. And if oil is pooling in the heads, that means oil is not in the sump. That means oil is not getting up into the motor and that is bad for your engine. So let's take a quick look at, at how that kind of thing happens and what we can do to solve it. This is the oil pan that came off of our uh, LS3 crate motor from Blueprint Engines uh, via Summit. And you can see how a traditional oil pan is designed. It's, um, this is the sump. This is where the oil is stored, where the oil is picked up to be distributed throughout the engine. Here's the knock. Modern car, especially a good handling car like a Corvette, you put a sticky tire on it, you put like a BF Goodrich uh, R1S like we're using, or a Hoosier, or even a, a hot street tire. Something where you're producing a lot of lateral grip and you're essentially leaning this oil pan over sideways. If you're pulling 1G, it's like this oil pan is sitting sideways and all of that oil is gonna climb up the side of the pan, it's gonna climb up the side of the sump. And if that oil is being pumped through the engine, whatever's left in there climbs up the side, climbs away from the oil pickup that's down in the sump, that pickup's gonna dry out, it's gonna, it's gonna starve for oil, and there's gonna be spinning uh, crankshafts and, and camshafts and all kinds of stuff inside that engine that will momentarily, if not, if not for a longer period of time, be starved of fresh oil. There will not be, not be any oil going, going to them until that oil, again, flows down to where that pickup can grab it, distribute it throughout the engine. So, having no oil, even for just a moment, is a very, very bad thing. So how do we solve it? Well, this is the oil tank for our Aviate dry sump system. It's gonna be 10 quarts, so that's what, uh, two and a half gallons of oil will be contained in here. This will be completely remote from the engine. We're gonna mount it uh, elsewhere under the hood, maybe even back in the, in, 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 in the back of the car, in, in the trunk. But this will contain the oil, all of the oil that our engine needs. And as you can see, it's very vertically oriented. So even under hard cornering, there's still gonna be a lot of oil down in the bottom of this tank to flow throughout your engine. And then plus there's a, just a heck of a lot of oil in there to begin with. So how do you get oil out of that tank? Well, you're gonna use a secondary pump. Now, the dry sump systems are, can run the gamut from systems that use your stock oil pump to produce pressure to actually circulate the oil and then use a secondary pump to what we call scavenge the oil out of the pan and recirculate it back to the tank and then to your engine. We're doing away with the internal pump altogether, going to a three-stage system from Aviate. So there is a single stage of pressure. There's actually one, one stage of, of the pump, one section of the pump is responsible for pumping the oil through the engine from drawing oil from this tank sending it to the engine, pressurizing it in the engine, and sending it through the engine. And there's two stages to scavenge the oil from this pan. Now, the first thing you'll notice is the pan is a lot shallower than the stock pan. That's because this pan does not, uh, does not act as a sump for your oil. This is just a sort of a temporary depot for the oil to be scavenged from. So the oil gets pumped into the motor, does whatever it does in the engine. It's all crazy witch doctor science. Uh, falls down into this pan. It is then sucked out of these two outlets uh, or scavenged back to this container here. So that's why this pan is so shallow because it does not need to contain the oil for more than a brief few seconds to allow it to be sucked right back to the oil sump. And that essentially is how a dry sump works. So what we're gonna do tonight is begin the installation of our dry sump as I very noisily set this down. And we're gonna see uh, our friend, uh, Jesse Spiker from Spiker Motorsports. So um, Jesse, tonight we are gonna begin the installation of this thing. And I've described it to you in my sort of rudimentary fourth grade education way. You're, you're the real mechanical expert here. So, so before we begin here, kind of walk us through uh, what's what's involved in, in tonight's operation? You know, in, in, in sort of the first first initial install stages of um, of dry sump installation. All right. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take care of all the internal stuff in the motor. 
Um, you see we've already removed the pan. Next step, we're gonna get rid of this water pump, harmonic balancer, take the timing cover off. That way we can remove our factory oil pump. We don't need it anymore with this three-stage system. Once that's all out of the way, slam it right back together, sans oil pump. We've already mounted our new pump on the side of the block. We'll show you that later. Um, we'll get the oil pan back on, and then we're gonna move to the back of the engine. We're gonna replace that plastic dog bone from the factory. Um, yeah. You got a nice aluminum piece. It's a little skinnier, it's a little stronger. Um, helps improve internal oiling from the engine itself. Um, once all that's together, we're pretty much ready to drop it in the car, and then we can start measuring our, our hose sizes, and we're good to go. Let's do it, let's get to work. So we are a couple of days in the future because we had a couple of parts to track down. Back to work tonight. So uh, Jesse, get on back in here. What, um, yeah, to Jesse everybody. <laughs> uh, all we really have left to do at, at, in this stage, kind of get things rolling, is to get the crank pulley on. We're using a ATI crank pulley, it's a little bit yep. lighter. Actually, I was holding both of these um, in my hand. A little bit less rotating mass, which is gonna be awesome. Uh, we can get our uh, mounting for our Aviade pump finalized get the drive belt on the pump and start putting the front of the engine back together and figuring out uh, we might have to change a few of the front motor accessories from uh, our LS3 style water pump to a Corvette style water pump. But we're gonna figure that stuff out as we go. We'll lay them out side by side and see exactly what we have to do. In the meantime, uh, what do we need to know to get this crank pulley on, Jesse? Uh, the only real trick is we're not using a keyed crank. We're not pinning the crank just yet. So we're gonna have to fill this keyway with silicone sealer so we don't leak oil out of the front cover. We left the front cover loose because as you see, it floats. Um, in order to get that front seal to seal, you have to have it floating while you press the pulley on. Once it's in place, you can tighten all the bolts and it'll seal. So that way the seal centers itself over it'll, that when yes. it goes on. Okay. It'll center itself on the balancer. And then we'll flip the motor, slap the pan on, and then we can start measuring lines, fittings, uh, seeing where we go from that. But as far as the motor goes, the dry sump is pretty much set after we get all this on. All right, so pans on, pumps on. We have kind of a rough idea of where our lines need to go, the lines that go from the, the, the scavenge outlets on the pan to the pump, the pump's right next door, so those are gonna be nice and short, and nice and easy. We should be able to get those from Aviade. Uh, the rest of the lines are gonna be a little trickier. That's something we're not gonna really be able to do fully until we get the engine in the car. But uh, aside from that, we basically have the engine part together. The, the pump and the pan are all, all that is. Next thing we need to do is look at the front of the engine, figure out what drive accessories we're, we're gonna need probably throw a new water pump on, on the front of it and uh, we'll do that next. But stage one is very much complete. Any, any final thoughts? I got nothing for you. <laughs> I, you know what, that's, that's as good as anything. Folks, uh, if you're enjoying the content on Grassroots Motorsports YouTube page, do me a favor, go down, uh, well, it's down here, right? Yeah, go down here and subscribe and um, you get first crack at all of our content. Go to Grassroots Motorsports com on the web check out our print magazine check out all the great content on the web page and we'll be back with more of our dry sump install as soon as we finish the next stage of this thing which is going to be um bolting the engine to the torque tube and bol bolting the torque tube to the, to the transmission getting it back up into the car and starting to run some lines from our tank to here and around the engine compartment and that is it thanks for watching everybody Support brands that support grassroots motorsports. Get your chemical solutions from CRC Industries. Visit crcindustries.com to learn more.